Welcome in to the Arkansas Sports Network's Hometown Sports Football Preview. Proudly presented by Arkansas Tech University, D3 Auto Sales, and Metcalf Trucking and Trailer Repair. Today we visit with Fayetteville Bulldog head coach Casey Dick. This pigskin preview is sponsored by First Community Bank. All right, I am here with uh, Coach Casey Dick, the head football coach here at Fayetteville High School and uh, former Arkansas Razorback. Um, so, Coach, uh, you guys had pretty much as good a season as you could last year, 15-0 in a state title. Um, but y'all had some some really close competitive games. Uh, Rogers was, I think, 47-42. And then Conway in the playoffs, a three-point game, and probably a couple of I'm forgetting about in there. But um, So, you know, you, you guys had some, some competition, but you were able to come out on top in the big games when it mattered. What did you guys do to prepare your team for those big moments um, and, and getting to that big stage? You know, I think it's, it goes back to exactly like what you said. I think our preparation was something that we, you know, try to do differently, you know, than everybody else. Um, you know, a lot. Of, I think one of the best things we did all year was, you know, our kids knew every single day um, when they walked in to our field house on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, you know, how a, how a Monday practice was going to look, how a Tuesday practice would be, how a Wednesday would be going, a Thursday, and those – you know, the periods never deviated. You know, some of those things that we did within the, the practice structure changed. Um, but just an overall, from an overall time standpoint, obviously, uh, just an overall consistency. We never we never deviated from that original plan. And I think that was one of the big things um, that really, really helped us from, a you know, the, just the injury and lifting schedule, the meeting schedule, the going outside and practicing. But, um, you know, the kids really, really just, they, they enjoyed being around each other, being up here. And obviously that's big, especially when, you spend the amount of time that we spend up here, you know, preparing and, you know, being around each other all the time. And it's just really big for those guys to have that sort of investment in each other. Mm -hmm. um, you you guys graduate uh, some some key players. Um, you know, Drake Lindsay's off to play power five or back, I guess power four now uh, football. Um, and so you guys kind of lose a, a two year starter, I guess it was a two year starter, mm -hmm. right? And, uh, you know, leader and won a lot of awards and things like that. Uh, how do you replace um, a guy like that or some other guys on your team that have been leaders and key contributors? Yeah, you know, I think when you look at the, you know, the offense last year, you know, everybody circled Drake, but um, really coming back from, you know, going and evolving it into this year, you know, there's, you know, you can look at it and say there's probably eight of those guys, you know, that played last year are back, all of our receivers are back. We're having to replace a couple of offensive linemen. Um, but you know, there's there's a lot of kids. Anytime you can you have kids that come back with a lot of experience, that always helps. Um, some of those kids has had experience dating back from sophomores. Um, now they were juniors last year. Now they're seniors, so they really know, you know, what to expect, what a Friday night's going to be like. Um, you know, and, and Drake's a great football player, unbelievable football player that had a fantastic career. Um, is doing unbelievable things in Minnesota already as a, as a freshman. Um, and then you look at the defensive side and. You're losing Isaiah Taylor and Caden Spencer, which were two, you know, really, really electric football players for us. That really kind of anchored our defense and, and settled them down a lot, um, which I thought they did a phenomenal job all year, really going on competing. You look at the playoffs, and, you know, we got to go to Southside. Southside comes to you, you know, they had, at that time, the number one ranked rushing offense in the state, do a phenomenal job against them, playing really well. And then Conway, at that time, had the number one ranked scoring offense in the state and played fantastic against them. And obviously, Ben Bill, who, after you know what happened with Conway and transpired, then we had played Ben Bowes, another just a big time rival that had the number one ranked offense in the state at that time. And you know, you look at their performances all throughout the year, it's just really, really steady, really, really consistent. Um, and they just played fast and executed really, really well. Mm -hmm. In seven A, there really are no cupcake games. There are no no easy layups. Um, and then now with with the competitive uh, realignment, I guess, is, is what they they call it, a bit of equity realignment or whatever it is. And with, you know, teams like Glass Academy and Little Rock Christian moving in, um, it just gets more difficult. Um, how do you guys expect Seven A to be this year? And how do you? What is your your formula for um, being able to 
you know, compete in those in those probably high scoring and really high energy games. Yeah, you know, I think it's, it'll be as strong as it's ever been. Um, especially like you said, you mentioned you got Little Rock, Christian coming in, you know, PA coming in, um, Northside coming in our conference. So, I mean, again, I think it'll be as strong as it's ever been. And you know, I think a lot of it will come down to preparation and doing a great job each week, just like it always is. And, you know, the, the, the deal with you know, down in the central, it'll be, it's going to be a lot tougher for those teams because I think Little Rock Christian and PA, you know, just their overall programs, their coaches, they do a phenomenal job. So, you know, the, that whole entire conference in, in 7A Central just got a lot, a lot more tough. And obviously, you know, we're working with Northside, who's, you know, traditionally got a lot of athletes, you got a lot of speed and do a lot of great things well. So, you know, I think everybody as a whole has just got a little bit more difficult for everybody from, from the top down for sure. Mm-hmm. Uh, tell me what you guys do as far as your scheme on offense. Obviously, uh, last year you guys put up a lot of points and a lot of gains. So, um, you know, whatever you guys are doing, you're doing something right. So, um, tell me about what you guys do on, on offense and uh, what your expectation is for that group this year. Yeah, we do, we're just like a multiple spread team, multiple formations, um, different personnel groups. And we just try to put our kids in the best situation to be successful, really. That's what that's what it is. I mean, we look for certain matchups, try to create those certain matchups, and then get and then you know it sounds easy, but overall just try to get the ball to the playmakers, you know, on the edge and on the perimeter, and give them an ability to you know go make a play. We have some we have some great great kids with great talent that do a phenomenal job when the ball gets in their hand, um, and they do a really really good job of, of you know whether it's getting four yards or going to getting forty yards um, of just making the easy routine plays and, and doing things well and. You know, defensively, we're you're going to watch us. We're probably a high pressure football team, and everybody thinks it's kind of like controlled chaos from that standpoint. But they do it. Our defensive coaches do a phenomenal job each week of putting the plan together, really letting our kids embrace it, and just being, you know, I call it an attacking style defense. We're we're, we're going and moving, and everybody's moving around on the field. It's it's really fun to watch. Mm-hmm. So tell me what the community is like in in Fayetteville. Um, you know, obviously. Razorbacks are literally right down the street. Um, you, you've you've been in this town for some time now. Um, so tell me about what you've noticed about the community in Fayetteville and how um, the community was whenever you guys made a run and won a state title last year. Yeah, I think it's it's the top community in the state for sure. Just from a, from a backing standpoint, too. You know, it's purple on Friday and it's, it's Razorback red on Saturday. Um, everybody's flies purple flags on Friday. The community supports awesome. Um, just the way that they can kind of support our kids, support our program, um, you know, and, and really have have invested in our program. Uh, you know, we have our, our our saying, our you know, slogan is family. And we we've taken everybody in, and they've done a phenomenal job of, of coming in, being a part of our program. Like I tell the kids, and and then as well, we want them to be a part of our program, uh, be a part of our program just as much as you know their sons, you know, his grandsons, or what whatever they are are in our program. We want them to be involved as well. They've taken that and rolled with it and done a phenomenal job and, and really, you know, kind of elevated, um, you know, our overall outlook for the season for sure. So tell me what you guys do in the, in the off seasons. Uh, obviously, I'm sure the cameras can hear some of the weight training going on in the back here. Um, pretty intense stuff. So tell me about what you guys do um, in the off season and trying to balance, um, you know, weight training, getting plays right in practice, and doing, you know, team camps and seven-on-sevens and things like that? You know, it, we try to balance all that and put it together, especially trying to just put the best plan together you can that fits your kids. You know, what fits us may not fit, you know, Northside or may not fit, you know, Benville West or whoever it is um, because each one, each one of those programs is different, um, you know, different philosophies, different beliefs, you know, and all those things. But, you know, as far as from really from January till – I'd say mid-April, we're in the weight room four days a week. Um, you know, we do a leadership class where we identify about our top 20 to 30 kids that we think can go in um, into a classroom setting, and they pretty much go through a 16-week curriculum on leadership that in, in learning, you know, basic characteristics and traits of leaders of leadership and what it means to be a leader, how to be a leader, um, and how to go about that in a positive way and really affect everybody in, in our locker room. Um, and then, I, and then we start our skills practices in March. In mid-April, we're, every Tuesday and Thursday morning, we're up here at seven thirty with all of our with all of our kids, whether you're a freshman or, you know, um, a senior. You're involved in those, and then we're still continuing that four day workout um, all throughout really the end of school in May. Um, and then summer, we get the days that you know you can do seven on seven and team camps, and try to divide those up, and make it as equal as we can. And obviously, July get them, you know, try to get them back, get them conditioned, get them ready to go for practice. Tell me about your. Um 
your roster this year, um, guys who you think will um, have a, a bigger impact maybe than they did last year, and then guys you're going to be leaning on to be uh, key contributors or standout players for you this Yeah, year. we'll start with defense. I think when you look at defense, there's, there's a lot of returning pieces over there. There's a lot of speed over there. Um, you know, on the back end, we'll start with those guys at corner. You know, you got we've got um, Kenyon Johnson, Brody Jones, Mathis Brady, Xavier Burns um, that will really kind of anchor that corner position for us that provide a lot of athleticism um, for us that provide, you know, a lot of experience as well um, at corner and at safety. You know, we've got four or five guys that we feel confident in, in, in Cole Wadley, Kendrick Williams, and, and Charlie Garden, you know, Blake Johnson, Walker Blake. Uh, that we can really rotate in there and get some valuable snaps and have done a lot of great things for us in the past as well. And that, that linebacker, I think we're as deep as we ever, we've ever been. Um, you know, I think we have a lot of speed there. I think there's eight guys, obviously, in that rotation that you could look at and they could, they could really go on the field and, and get some valuable snaps for us from that standpoint. And then that defensive line, um, you know, I think we're really athletic. Um, we're, we, I think we're, we've got some guys up there that can, that can move and do some, some positive things for us, for sure. Kind of try to create the same thing that we did last year from that standpoint, because I think that really helped us. You know, on offense, um, we'll return. You know, like Jason Delmar at, um, will be at receiver. Ty Magdalene's back playing as a receiver for us. Katavian Taylor is a kid that I believe will have a, you know, a, a, a pretty successful season for us. Um, I, I would expect big things. Just going to be a junior. You got Charlie Graves, who's kind of like Mr. Steady for us. Um, does a phenomenal job week in and week out. Uh, you know, he's a big time baseball player and Jason is as well. So they're, they're, they're balancing the baseball and, and football life and doing a, doing a great job of, of that. Um, you know, and then, the, and then at running back, we love, you know, we love our running backs right now. We have, we got two, what we feel like really good ones in, in Christian battles and, um, Caleb Johnson. And then we have Gary and Cruz coach, Gary Odom and Cruz coach, a quarterback that, um, you know, done a great job all spring of, of really getting better all year. And then, you know, I think our offensive line is probably one of our most improved positions um, out there for sure. They've done, I think they've done a good job of, of really coming in and um, valuing their time at their position, you know, creating an identity there and really, really collectively as a whole. Good thing. Tell me about your schedule this year, uh, who you guys play in non-conference and then moving into conference play, um, maybe some, some games that you guys are looking forward to. Yeah, I think when you look at our non-conference schedule, it's, it's pretty tough. I mean, we're going to go to Cabot. Uh, two Broken Arrow, and then over in Oklahoma and Tulsa, and then Texas High um, is going to come up here uh, late in September. So we'll we'll just kind of see what see what that's about, and then you know we'll open up conference play with Bill West, um, you know, and then we'll go through the schedule. And you you look at our schedule, like you said, we kind of hit on it earlier. I don't think there's a week where you can you can pencil anything in because I think each week is is going to be a really really competitive week. I think each week you're going to have to show up, compete, and go play your tail off in order to have a chance, you know. In order to go to be successful, um, you know, like I said, I think it's as strong as the overall seven A has ever been. Last question for you, Coach. Um, what, what would your team have to do uh, or accomplish, or just you know, what's your expectation for this season between you and your staff and your players, where at the end of the year you'd be able to call it a success? Yeah, I think I think one of the biggest things we got to do, and it's probably not just for me and any team, but for us, our our two big things that, that we preach to our kids right now is. We've got to be the most unselfish team. Um, you know, nobody has to be a superstar. Nobody has to go out and create plays that they can't create. Um, but they've got to be unselfish. There's going to be a lot of personnel groupings coming in and off the field in certain situations and when we play certain teams. So, you know, rules may look different. You know, philosophically may look a little bit different. Try to get to the same things, you know, a little bit different way. But I think unselfish, we have to be, obviously. We talk to those kids about that. And the biggest thing, kind of the, just the reverse opposite of that is, We've got to be the most together team in, 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 you know, in the state in order to go be successful. And our kids, I think, have bought into that, really encouraging each other and showing up and putting in you know, a lot of work and a lot of effort. Every day. All right, this has been an interview with Coach Casey Dick, here, the head football coach of the state champion Fayetteville Bulldogs. Um, coach, is there anything you want to say about your uh, your team or your program before we sign off here? There's not. I appreciate you guys for having me. Thanks for stopping by. And, and like I said, I appreciate the chance to sit down and talk. All right, I'm Carson Ward for Arkansas Sports Network. You can find Arkansas Sports Network on Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, and X. We'll have even more interviews with even more coaches coming up all the way to the beginning of football season. Until then, signing off.
Thanks again for joining us on the Arkansas Sports Network's Hometown Sports Football Preview. Don't forget to like and subscribe to the Arkansas Sports Network on YouTube to catch more previews and all the latest updates on your favorite teams.